pure E sub E, elastic potential energy. This is the energy stored in an elastic material. Usually we think of it as a spring. So elastic potential energy is the energy stored in a spring. The equation for elastic potential energy is 1 half kx squared. Unlike the other terms, which all have variables which we're already familiar with, we have an entirely new variable here, which is this k. K stands for the spring constant. And in general, the spring constant has dimensions of newtons per meter. The spring constant is essentially a measure of how difficult it is to compress or expand a spring by a certain distance. A slinky is a spring. And I have a double length slinky. Uh, I have the best toys. Look at my double length slinky. Okay. So the slinky, which is a spring, class has a high or low spring constant. Uh. Low. Notice it doesn't take much force to compress or expand this spring. So the slinky would have a low spring constant. What about the shock absorbers in your car, which are, some of them are also springs. Would that be a low or high spring constant? Uh, it would be high because your car has a very large mass and therefore there's a very large force. So it just gives you an idea of what the spring constant is. X in this equation is the displacement from the equilibrium position. The equilibrium position is also sometimes called the rest position. You will hear me actually refer to it as both. I'll go, go back and forth between rest position and equilibrium position because they really do mean the same thing. Basically, it is the location at which the spring would be in equilibrium if there's no uh, forces acting on it, which means it's also going to be at rest. So you can see that both terms uh, actually work interchangeably. Help me figure out the dimensions on the spring constant, Stuart. the displacement from equilibrium position? Meters squared. Meters squared. Which turns out to be millions times meters, which equals joules. Again, all four of the new things today are all in the exact same dimensions. They are all in joules, and they are all scalar quantities. Elastic potential energy, deeds, can you have negative elastic potential energy? Work through it. Just go, go step by step. Can you have a negative spring constant? Yes. Just so you know, a negative spring constant would be a spring that actually compresses itself without anything touching. Okay, so no, that's not possible. Actually, you could probably have something that would work like that, but it wouldn't actually be a spring. It would be something entirely different. Okay, okay, so no. So no, draw the spring constant. What about x? x is going to be negative. True. So can you have negative elastic potential energy? Yes. How? If x was negative. Right. Eric? But x squared. Right. OK, <laughs> so then no. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so please understand, elastic potential energy, because x is squared, yes, the displacement could be negative, but because we square it, <coughs> the, the elastic potential energy cannot be negative. So both of the equations that have squares in them cannot be negative whereas gravitational potential energy and work actually both can be negative. Let's do an example involving a spring so we can work with that equation and understand a little bit more about it. Page 177, practice problem number two. 177 practice number, problem number two. Uh, check us if you could please read it when you get there. Okay. Um, the staples inside a stapler are kept in place by a spring with a relaxed length of 0.115 meters. If the spring constant is 51.0 uh, newtons per meter, um, how much elastic potential energy is stored in the spring when its length is 0.150 meters? So, we have a spring. 
Originally, before we do anything to it, it has a certain relaxed length, which is 0.115 meters. And I'll be able to figure that on the board. We're then going to expand that spring. We're going to pull on it, and it's going to have a new length, a length when it's stretched, which we're going to illustrate like this, which has a value of 0.150 meters. We know the spring constant of the spring, and all they're asking is, what is the elastic potential energy stored in the spring? The equation is 1 half kx squared. We have the spring constant, it's 51. So what we need is the x. Tristan, what is the displacement from equilibrium position in this uh, problem, or how do I figure it out? Um, I think it would be the length stretch. The length stretch isn't going to be the displacement from the equilibrium position. We use that to figure out the displacement from the equilibrium position. Matt? Uh, um, displacement is going to be the length stretch minus the react of the uh, spring relax. This right here is the equilibrium position. So x, the distance from the equilibrium position, you're right, is going to be the stretched length minus the relaxed length in order to get this distance, get x here, the distance from the equilibrium position which is 0 0.150 minus 0 0.115 that square. Elastic potential energy. to 0.0312 joules, or if you prefer, 31.2 what? Millijoules. Millijoules. Just like you can have millimeters, you can also have millijoules. Always fun to practice. 